Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Uh, if you really want to create the beautiful menu application uh, using Sponocular API and Next 13, then I think you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to take you to the complete step-by-step -step journey on how to create a beautiful menu application in Next 13. Uh, in this whole project, you are going to learn about Next 13 and its core concept such as server components, client components, we are going to learn about such params, we are going to learn how to make data fetching in Next.js, about all those dynamic and static rendering as well. Uh, we are also going to learn a new UI library called Daisy UI, which is built on top of Tailwind CSS, right? And we'll see how you can take the advantage of pre-built component from there as well. Another important thing that we're going to learn in this video is how to use the Sponocular API which is a free API and how we can do the uh, static and dynamic data fetching in next years using the free API. So without any further ado, let's see how the project look like and I'll show you the demo of the project here. You can see here the project look like this. We have the search bar on the top of the page where we can search for any kind of menu. Then we have the default for Apple and we can see here we have shown the product in all of these cards for the Apple for all the food menu that contain apple right so now if i go to the search menu and search for banana like this and hit the search then you can see here i get the menu item for banana and this is the item that we get by hitting the sponu color api so we're going to see how we can fetch the data from the api and how we can make the search request and uh, get the search value from the api as well another important thing to notice here is this question mark q equals to banana so which means that we are sending the search param into our page and we can also see how you can use the search param and dynamic rendering in server component using search param and getting the data from the search param value as well so obviously uh the work is quite complex here even the product is like the project is pretty simple however there are many core concepts that is very useful to learn in next years and we're going to learn it all step by step so now we are in our laptop uh, the first thing that we want to do is look after our API, right? So for the API, you can go to your browser and start typing S P O O N A C U L A R Spanocular API. I'll keep the link in the description below. Uh, you can see the first link, which is spanocular.com slash food API. Uh, when you first visit this site, obviously you might not be the logged in user, so obviously you have to do the registration and sign up. After you register, you can see my console here. You can go to the console and you can see under API console there are four tabs and we want to go to the second tab called profile. Inside profile I have this API key. You might not have the API key at the beginning. For that you have to obviously click this button called generate new API key and generate the API key for yourself. You can click this button to show or hide the API key and obviously you have to copy this API key to use it inside your project so that you are authorized enough to use the API. So make sure you have this API key, like I have it here, okay? After that, let's have a look at the docs as well. I mean, the docs contain a lot of things, but we don't need all of it. Only thing that we need for our particular project is the menu API. So I just type menu. And you can see here, we have this API where we can pass uh, any query, like chicken, apple, banana, or anything. And we can also pass how many number of item that we want to receive back and after we provide it it gives a detail of all the all the things that we need or all the things that is inside the menu so this is the only particular api that we, we will be using in our project so that's the only two things to be mindful of regarding the api now let's start and create a project so to create a project we have to go to the next three documentation you can see here we can just type uh, npx create next app whether it latest less less experimental app for the exper experimental app directory obviously and it says the ty typescript is set up uh, now it sits typescript by default so we don't have to do any typescript configuration because it support typescript by default so let me co uh, copy this and go to my terminal inside this folder that i have created i'll just paste that and hit enter it will ask me a series of questions so the first question is what is your project name so the project name is menu app like this and yes i like the typescript support would you like to use eslint yes uh would you like to use tailwind css yes 
and it will be like source directory i don't want the source directory so i'll just say no for now and what's an important alias alias i'll just say at the rate yeah so now it will uh, it will install the project as you can see here the installation project uh, process has completed and now we have our next app right so if i see ls then you can see i have this menu app i will go inside the menu app like this and then i will just say npm run dev like this after that it just says that the project is successfully running in localhost 3000 so i'll just go out here and i'll just type localhost 3000 like this obviously there's some cache file of some other project so i'll just remove it and you can see the next project is here with the app beta directory right now let's open the project in our vs code i'll just go to vs code open folder uh, I'll just say documents and workspace then we have YouTube and we have menu app and I'll just open this particular menu app here now I'll just start the terminal inside the VS code as well and I will close this particular terminal I'll just run npm run tape from here and I think it will run perfectly fine okay I don't know whether it is showing up I think this cast from like previous project okay but anyway uh, you can see here it is showing up perfectly now if I go to the app directory we have API which is of no use for us so I can remove this folder you don't have to if you don't want to but I will just to keep it clean uh, inside page directory we have a lot of things which I don't need and I can also completely remove all of it so let me remove everything from here as well uh, I can just write normal s1 tag with uh, this is my menu app like this uh, inside layout we have normally this I just I'm just going to change the title to menu app and I'll just say uh, a normal app which display all menu and let's you search one as well like this like any random text right i'll just uh, provide description as well so that we can get this title here uh, okay now we have this global.css uh, i'm not going to change anything in it for now but i might uh, i don't need any color and background color obviously so i'll just remove that and now since i'm not using any root value i'm just also not going to use any of it either so it's pretty generic and i think it's pretty fine for now okay so the setup is done now let's start creating our first component okay so before creating the component uh, we also need another important thing which is our daisy ui uh, library so we're going to use this particular library to create our components uh, you can see here this is the documentation and there are so many components like a lot art box obviously we don't need this uh, ui library for this small project uh, but obviously i just want to want you to know about this library how good it is and how fast it makes the development process as well so uh, i mean it's, since we are doing this project for the learning process i think it's a good thing to learn as well so i'm just including this particular component in our project too so that you can have an idea about it as well okay so let's install this particular uh, package the ui component package so for install i can just say npm install daisy ui like that uh, just install it from here and then uh, i have to go to the talwin.config.js file and add this plugin so talwin.config.js where is it i think it is here and inside the plugin i'll replace it by this yeah so it is good i think i can now directly start using the component i guess let's try one let's try this particular card component yeah i think i will just use this one component uh let me copy all of this from here like this and i go to the page instead of this i'll just say like this uh but obviously we don't have any images for now so let's copy the path of this image so i'll just say copy image address and i'll put the image like this from here okay i'll just say npm run dev 
okay so it's running let's see what we get here okay okay so we get the card right see how easy it is uh if we use this daisy ui and the card looks so beautiful as well right so yeah so this is uh working perfectly fine and our ui library has been installed perfectly so now we can start creating our components all right so the first component that we are going to create is the search bar all right so for that i will go to the page but before that i'll go to this global .css and i want to give some general styling to the body i'll just give max width uh, to the body of 1920 pixel and i also want to give margin auto to the whole body right so that the body is doesn't exceed the width and also uh, stays in the center so now inside the page we have this card which i don't need i was just using it to test the component uh the ui was working or not so now inside main what we're going to do is uh let me remove all of this class obviously i need flex right i have to create a flex so the flex will be of column <coughs> so the direction direction of the flex will be column uh justify will be center and i will also do align items to center okay like this uh, here I will create the component called the source bar. So let's create a component inside our app directory I will create a new folder called Components like this here. I will create a new file called search bar dot uh, I'll just type rfc and tab so it will just give me all this search bar and everything So now I can just save this and use that component here. Let's see if it works or not so search bar so it is imported here i don't need this font either so if i go out here into this page and refresh it like this okay i get the component right so i think it's working fine uh, up until now so inside search bar we need the input of search now for that obviously i have we have to go to this daisy ui component and here we can just type input uh, inside input group right we can find a lot of input here so but we want the input for search so for that and where it's gone okay, okay so i'll just go out here again input like this input group uh we want the input for source so i'll just copy this particular code from here to here directly right now save it if i go and see here then i get this search box here so it is that easy to use a component directly from this uh, ui library and we, we automatically get our search bar right this is awesome okay so now we obviously don't want this particular uh, design for our page we want to customize it so let's customize it and see what we can do uh, we have this div with class name of like a uh, form control we want to do a couple of things here first thing is we want to give it a width this uh, it is pretty much simple so i want to make it a little bit bigger i'll give it a width of 70 percent like this okay um another thing that i want to do is give it a margin auto let's try it so margin auto i will also give it a margin wide of four so we can get from top a little bit space okay so now in input group we also want to increase the width of this particular item as well so i'll just call it flex like this i want to give it a justify of center uh, justify center like this i will give items to be center as well uh, i want to give it a shadow it's like this shadow of extra large probably uh, maybe two times extra large yeah i'll give it a padding of zero let's see okay this looks great but obviously the uh the box is a little bit bigger and the input box is not right so let's see mm, we have this thing here where we have given shadow to this div 
but the input is a little bit small so we have to make input a little bit bigger so for that obviously we can give the width of input to 100 percent like this so that it takes up the whole space like that so i think it's pretty good it's pretty good another thing that i want is i don't want i don't like the border here so i'll just remove the input border like that okay uh pretty good i don't want this outline when we focus on it so i'll just say focus and then outline to be none like this so now when i click here it's, it looks great also another thing that we want is i want the text to be yellow of 500 probably let's see yeah it's good but i want it to be a little bit more darker so it's a little bit more visible yeah i think this is good enough uh, i will just say instead of input type text i want it to be input type search and placeholder i will just say search menu uh, example like apple or banana or milk etc like this okay yeah so if i refresh this i don't know i'm just getting this cast file for some reason okay it looks great but i also want to change the color of this placeholder as well it doesn't look that perfect so i'll just say uh, inside here of placeholder i'll just say text dash hello 600 right okay so let's see it looks great and when i type it looks great but i think i should give it a little bit less of probably like 500 so that it's a little bit yellow and then i type and it's different okay so this looks great for me uh it's fine now i want to design uh this button as well i want to make change the color of this button so let's do it quickly i'll just say bg dash yellow of 300 i just want to also give the border like this next thing is i want to change it on hover as well of pg of 500 and when hover i want to say border of yellow of 500 as well like this okay it looks perfect so now i go out here i type it's fine and it also looks pretty awesome so yeah it's pretty much done with our search bar and now we're going to create our um, card component so the second thing we are going to build is our card component uh so let's go out here we want the card component to be just below this search bar component uh so let's create a section first i'll just say section like this inside the section what we're going to have is we have the class name of flex justify to be center i want items to be center as well uh margin will be six and then flex wrap i want to wrap it up so this is a flex wrap like here and i want to give it a width of 90 percent so i'll just say 90 percentage like this okay yeah so i think that's done uh inside here we want our card component so first thing is let's create that component so inside components folder i'll just create a new file i'll call it card.tsx i'll just say rfc now we have this card and now let's find our card in our daisy ui so here i'll just write card and there are a lot of cards here but which card i particularly want is the cjsx of this yeah this is the card that i want so i'll just copy this file i'll just paste it here save it obviously the image will not work let's copy the image again so i'll just say copy image address and i'll put the image address here like this and i'm going to put the card component here like this right 
now if I go to the page okay so the card component is not uh, available for some reason let's see why that is I think we have to import it okay so I'll just say card and I'll import it from the component yeah like that okay so we have a problem here it says that webpack requires g function or whatever but let me remove all of this from here because we don't need any of it okay like this let's see now it's compiled successfully okay i just need to remove this yeah we get our card component here absolutely fine no problem at all okay uh let me copy this card component for a couple of time like this see if the flex wrap property is working perfectly or not yeah i think it is working pretty good but in our card component i think i have given this margin yeah i think i will give this margin of like five so that there is little bit gap between each and every one of them yeah like this now it looks absolutely fine let's see if it is responsive or, or not and it is absolutely responsive so the project is responsive as well and it's working perfectly okay uh inside our card component we are not going to need a couple of things so the first thing that we might not need is the button so yeah we don't need the button also we don't need the paragraph we just need that title only okay so now this is good as well now what i'm going to do here is instead of using this image we're going to use next image so that is better to use next image i'll just remove this i'll just say image like here and then instead of image i would put it inside a div right so i'll just say div i'll put the image here uh, i also want to give it fill layout and i want to it have to have a style of like object feet to cover like this i think uh it's showing us some error for some reason okay so image component has not been imported so i'll just let's uh, import it from next image like this okay so i think it will work fine now uh inside div the div will have like a class name of it will contain the height of 270 pixel 70 pixel like this um, I want this width to be 100% to the parent so let's say 100% like this and I want to make, to make it relative obviously because if we are giving fill property here layout then we obviously have to give relative here to the parent component so I think it will work fine as well now okay so obviously the image source has to be configured properly so let's say we have this daisyui.com let's see the documentation here it says that one of your pages uh, when we use this component then we have to add the domain image domain in our next config file like this right or like this so i'll just copy this inside our next.config.js file inside next config we are going to need this and we have to put it here and as you can see we don't have this daisyui.com right so i'll just say d-i-s-y daisyui.com and i think it will fix the error i think i guess it will fix the error so let's see okay so d-a-i-s-y okay yeah it fixed the error and we get the component and if you check the responsivity of it then it is absolutely responsive but obviously design <laughs> design doesn't look that perfect because there is a sharp edge here so for that i have a solution uh, i can just say here overflow hidden so i'll just say overflow hidden and now we get the rounded corner here as well so everything is working perfectly the design is set up perfectly now the only thing we need to do is obviously fetch the data from the api other than that the design is responsive and it looks perfect okay so in our next section we are going to fetch the data from the api and display it here all right so what we're going to do now is we're going to cover the data fetching part of our project up until now the project works absolutely fine 
um, I don't know why I'm getting this CAS file. <laughs> Let me show you actually. Uh, if I just copy this and if I go to my incognito window, I don't get anything obviously because there is no CAS at all. But I don't know for some reason there I'm getting it. But anyway, I, uh, that's not much of a issue for now. But yeah, Chrome is giving me this that cast from I don't know like project that it was I did like five months ago and it's still showing their cast file in localhost for some reason I have to remove the cast but uh, right now it's not a problem anyway let's get started with our own project here that's the priority now uh, for first thing is I have to fetch the data from the API right so now again go back to let's go back to our uh, API of Spanocular API here now the UI section is done uh, if I go to docs and I can go to menu here then you can see here i get the data from uh the api like this right so for that i have to go to my server component so inside our app directory inside our every app directory every component is automatically by default the server component okay so now here what i'm going to do is i will just go out here in our home page and i'll just say um, const menu list is equals to fetch and i'm going to fetch it from the api uh from api link here obviously not this like this okay uh so for this to work we need to provide our api key okay so we have provided OPI, api key here like this and like this so to add an api key we have to make it a template so we, i'm just going to add a back tick here like this and here like this as well so that we can provide a variable here so provide a variable like this as well here okay uh i want to get at least uh, i have no problem with getting two number uh limit of two data only for now so i will just uh leave the number equal to two as it is for now so let's add the api key uh, so i want to save my api key in some environment variable so for that let's go to the next documentation and if i go to the doc and search e and v environment variable then i think i can just directly write dot e and v dot okay so let's go out here and create a new file called env for now and i'll just see here api underscore key is equals to and i'm going to get the api key from my console so here i can go to the profile and so api key i'll just copy this api key here and paste it here like this okay so now in our page i can just right go out here and say process dot env dot api i don't know what is the name of the variable api underscore key let's go out here and paste it see if it works yeah uh, i think it will probably work now let's log this value so i'll just go out here and console log it and you can see here what i get is obviously a promise because we have to wait the promise and since it is a server component and it runs in the server we can make it asynchronous so we can just add async here obviously small later i think and then we can await it here like this so now probably i'll get something yeah at least now i get the response but it says that the status is 401 so it status 401 if you whoever don't know it means unauthorized right so that means that the env key is not uh used here so instead of using it here let first try to use it directly for now i'll just copy it and I'll just paste it here and save it <coughs> sorry uh, now you can see if I just refresh it then probably I will get the value but still I'm getting <laughs> 401 right for some reason I think there's something wrong with the <coughs> API we are using here so let's see the documentation again uh, let's go to menu yeah so the menu that i want is this auto complete menu right of the menu list so let's find it quickly right here so what i actually wanted 
was the menu for the page and that was let's say search menu so yeah this was the api that i wanted i think i misplaced the api so i'll just copy this again quickly like this and i will paste it here like this a little bit quicker and i'll just instead of this i'll just add api key like this i'll just api key equals to and and here and i'm going to here add the string value so if i just go out here copy it and i'll just paste it paste the api key value there now i think it will work fine let's see if it did or not yeah i think it did because now it's showing us this all this value here right uh to verify that let's get the json from there as well so i'll just got this and i'll just say oh wait i'll put the face from here and i'll just say dot json like this and now you can see i get the data i get the burger sliders i get the bacon king burgers and everything so everything is working fine now now let's again try to put it inside this env file and use it from there so i'll just say dollar curly braces and i'll just say process dot env dot uh, api key underscore underscore key like this see if it still work and it's just, it is still working which means our api is now working absolutely fine and we instead of putting the api key directly here we are using e env uh, file or env variable for it which means it's more secure to put api like this way so this is absolutely good now since we have menu item list here i want to get the data and i want to display it there right so here what i will actually do is instead of putting it like this I will actually say like menu list like this see how it works so now I actually get an array or something so let's save it or oh, it says that it's undefined so what I can do is uh, probably I might be able to do this like menu items like this and here I can just say menu items okay i cannot i can put it like that so i think the another option here is i get the data and if i just say menu list here let's see how we are getting the data here so if i just save this i don't know why i'm not getting not getting anything here okay so let's just close this and start again for some reason it's not working let's see why that is uh, let's save the file okay let's go out here as well and run the project once okay so yeah i'm getting the data here but inside here we have this menu list which contains the menu item right uh, but i want the menu item from here so okay i don't want to i want to destructure it directly that's the that's the thing that i'm trying to achieve here so to destructure it directly probably i can just do it like this here i will just say menu and items like this maybe it will work i don't know let's try if you never try you'll never know right so let's try it and see if it works i hope it does again yeah it does now i only get the array so this is what i wanted now i can use this variable and instead of displaying all the cards here like this let's remove all the cards and put it like this i'll just say menu items dot map we get obviously uh, the value and index and we're going to display all the card here like this so not like this cards like c a r d card here and obviously i want to put the key as well so that we don't get the warning from the react like this i will pass the title like uh either title title and i will also pass the image right e dot image 
so now image contain here images dot spanocular dot com so obviously we have to put this particular image in our config file so let's do that without any further ado so like here like this now the second we want is spanocular dot com so this particular link so let's save this as well so that we don't get any error in future okay so we provide the title and image now inside card component it has to accept the title image here so i'll just say title uh, comma image and it will be title of type string and also image of type string right so image of type string like this yeah so now inside source folder we can get the image like this and inside this h1 we can get the title like this it's pretty simple okay probably <clears throat> it will work let's see okay so we get two data here but i don't want two i want at least two well so let's change the number inside our pages inside our api we want the number to be two well so that we get at least two well items okay so now we get two well item here okay so this looks perfectly fine now let's work with our search component so search bar so inside search bar uh first we want to save the value in our some state okay so i'll just say const q and set q which is basically query q is for query you can give any name i'm just giving it some random name so let's see use state also i have to import it from the react here now i'll just create a variable called handle input uh change probably right so it's so a hand, handle input change obviously i have to put const here const handle input change equals to this function it will get the value some value so i'll just say on change equals to handle input change right regress the e and now i'm going to set this q to e dot target dot value like this okay so let's just format it so that we can see it perfectly okay <laughs> i don't know whether it's gonna stay there okay anyway uh it has type any but i want it to be string oh no it has to be type any but it is the type of anyway i will i will put the type any you can just find the type of this uh, e or this like event event and just put it there for now i'll just put it any here now you just say use state only works in client component obviously right so any kind of on click on change and use state this only work in the client component because uh, like if you want to uh, the, the way to differentiate between client and server component is if there is any interactivity then it has to be a client component basically so I'll just say use client here so that we can use the use state now it will work and the error will go away and now again that's because we are using use state or use effect handle click on click all of these are the functionality of client component so when we use that we have to use this use client comp uh, value here at the top because everything inside app directory is server component by default so we do this for client to make it client component so that we can use this use state okay so that's about it uh, another thing that we want to do is uh, which we are going to say that on key down right so on key down we want to say handle keyboard submit like this okay let's see so now i can just say const handle keyboard submit is equals to let's see if it works i'm just going to alert it for now like this so that i don't know why i'm still getting that that cache file for some reason i don't know why i'm getting that uh prop next image spanocular is not configured under next image config okay so let's just see if it's configured or not i think it is yeah let's see i think it is configured already but anyway let's see yeah uh so now if you just type anything 
yeah i get the i get the alert obviously but what i actually wanted there was uh inside search bar uh if we get the e here as well i also give it a type of any you can find the specific type of this event and give it there uh but what i actually wanted to do here was if say that if e dot key dot i, I don't know uh get key type in event js i don't know what that was a key property i'll just say e dot key okay so e dot key equals to equals to equals to enter right then then only i want to alert here like this okay let's see if it works type something hit enter okay it is working fine so whenever i hit the enter what i want to actually do is i want to redirect to some other place right so i'll just say here what i will do is say const router equals to use router from next router now i'll just say router dot push to probably slash uh, let's say home for now just for the sake of it uh, i'll just save it okay, okay so what's the problem casting failed i don't know about that go out here i i don't want to open it here only i just want to open it in the cognitive window for now it's just showing a lot of error for now so the next router was not mounted next router was not mounted okay let's just see router in client component next js okay, router redirect okay so let's see let's see how we can redirect in next js for now so redirect i don't know maybe in beta documentation there is anything about redirect let's see redirect here we have redirect actually but uh, let's see use router i think i can i think we can redirect with the user router in client component yeah so we have router here and yeah i think i think i'm actually doing everything right but i don't know why i'm getting the error so use router is from next navigation or oh, not from next router is from next navigation like this i guess so i think that was the error let's close it and open it again because it's still showing that configuration error even though i have made the configuration yeah now it's running i guess so if i just refresh this page yeah finally it's working <laughs> okay i will hit enter here and it's going to the slash home page which is absolutely what we wanted right uh but i also want to do something here in this button as well so i'll just say on click uh handle submit like this and again let's say const handle submit and here what we're going to do is we're simply going to say router to push again and to slash home obviously the slash home doesn't exist for now but we're still doing it just to test it out uh, if it works fine or not so i'll just say type something here and I click this button now i'm going to slash home okay so everything is working fine now so now what we actually want to do is i want to go to slash where q question mark q is equals to right uh, i have to put it inside here i guess let's try this out And here we will put this q value which is the uh, input value right so i'm just going to copy it again why i'm getting this error here for some reason i think it's fine uh, i'll just put it the same thing here as well okay let's see i'm getting the error here for some reason I don't know where that is. Let's see. 
question mark Q. I think it is the same. Question mark Q only instead of slash. Let's see. Will this work? Obviously, there is no home page. Oh, so the problem was the double quotation here. Yeah, the syntax error. Okay, so now it will work, I guess. So if I just go out here and I just say uh, milk, then yeah, we are getting this slash question mark equal to milk in our route, right? Which is basically a source param. Now let me see, show you the magic here. If I go to this page.txt file and if I go out here and if I just search here, search params, and if I just log this here, so log. Now you can see I get search params of q equal to milk because it is what it is here, right? So if I go out here and not provide anything here, then you can see the source params is empty object. But if I type here like apple, right? Now you can get the source param of apple here, which is pretty awesome, right? So now let's just go out here and say uh, const query equals to source param dot okay instead of doing this i can also obviously do that like this q i can directly directly get this q here so what i can say is if we have the q which is the query then put query here but if it, there is no query then put a default and i will i'm going to create a default of what is was the default already burger so i'll just create a default of burger or apple let's say apple now i'm going to remove this with our variable called query like that and after it i save it i'll go out here and refresh it and you can see i get the default of apple value and if i just type here milk hit enter it will get milk and give me it will face the milk and give the milk data it's pretty cool i can just say uh, i don't know what chicken and enter here this search button and i get the chicken because now the query is chicken right but if we don't provide any query go to our main page then the default is apple so we get everything about apple right now we search for banana hit enter then we get we go to this banana query it gets the query of banana and then it fills the data with the banana here and, and it shows all the banana menu item right so now again if I go to our main page it's absolutely fine now if I go to here and search for banana and hit enter we get query of banana so the the query now will be banana and it will face the banana menu and list it here so it's look it's absolutely perfectly and this is how source param works we can provide the source param here and it makes the component dynamic rendering so that this component will be dynamic re dynamically rendered and obviously server component so it works absolutely fine and it's just so awesome the next js is pretty good i absolutely love love how this next js app directory works okay uh but i also want to give a little bit more information here so i'll just put like a heading tag probably i'll just say heading as one and here i will just say your menu item list for i'll probably keep bold here uh, is as follow right like this okay so here obviously i'll put my query so if i just go to the normal home page then it just says your menu item for apple is is following and if i just go out here and search milk then it will show that your menu item list for milk is just following which is absolutely crazy and awesome so the sixth class name i'll just give it a margin uh y of like 10 so the space is there and i also want to give it a text uh i don't know what happened so text dash xl yeah it's also good here in this p i'll just give it a class name with text dash hello dash 300 which is good i also want to make it capitalize here like this it is also good probably 500 is good yeah so i get 500 and i also want to make it a little bit more bigger i'll just say text that to excel like this yeah i'll just also make it 2x 
two XL. I will make it four XL. Just for design purpose. Yeah, I think it's good. It looks really, really good. So your menu item for milk is just following, and it just shows the list here. Yeah. So the whole project is working fine, and I'm really happy. I can just type like chick and uh, spelling mistake, and I still get something right. I can just type app -E -L -E like this, and we don't get anything. So obviously we have to write something here for that as well. So if we want it to work, then obviously for it to work, there has to be menu item dot length. So if there is a length, then we want to show this, right? But if there is no menu item, so I just say menu items dot length if there is no length then uh, we want to show like same thing but we want to show we don't want any of this I just want to say no menu item found right so no menu items found let's see if it works yeah, it's showing zero, and I, probably the reason it's showing zero is because uh, menu dot length. So we can make it a boolean type, type checking. So I'll just say like this and put it here. So basically, by doing this double exclamation point, we are just checking that if it, either it is boolean or not, right? So now I just say no menu item found. If I just type something random, it will say no menu item found. But if I say banana, and say your main item list for banana is just falling okay so everything is working fine i hope you learned something new today and i think it was really really awesome next year's work perfectly fine we learned about so many things so many ideas we learn about search patterns we learn about server and client component how to do data fetching in next year's i hope it was really fruitful for you and if it was then please hit the like and subscribe to keep me motivated so that i come up with next amazing video for you thank you so much